So May is already here and there are a ton of great books coming out this month that we are all going to want to read, trust me. Hey everyone, my name is Holly and welcome back to your monthly dose of new book releases. I have 15 books here on my list all coming out in May, so let's just start things off on May 4th as there are five very exciting releases. First one is The Shadow of the Gods. Now if you want my full non-spoiler review where I lay out all of my thoughts, pros and cons, I did a whole video on this. I highly recommend checking it out, but for a quick summary, this is the first book to a new fantasy saga by John Gwen, who is most known for the Faithful and the Fallen series, and here, though we have a smaller world that shines positively with a condensed storyline. This is set in the world of Vikings. That's right, you have it all. If you are a Viking or a Norse enthusiast, this will definitely be your jam. It's set in the world of Vigrid, which is basically just a giant graveyard for the fallen gods who went to battle each other in the past and are now dead, as apparent with their giant corpses literally being used as homes. It is a grim, brutal, intense epic fantasy, and I cannot wait for you guys to read it. The Dragon of Ginseng. I hope I am somewhat close to pronouncing that correctly. This is the highly anticipated finale to many readers to the Bitch Queen Chronicles. I swear these books came out so fast it seemed like. They really caught me off guard and now it's completed, so perfect for a binge read. This is a story combining grimdark with high stakes and political intrigue. It follows a queen who travels to another country to reconcile with her husband who abandoned her many years ago. As simplistic as that sounds, it isn't. It's dripping with Asian culture badassery, deception, all things you hope to get in an adult fantasy novel, and I am so very excited to finally binge read this trilogy. Project Hail Mary. So anyone who enjoyed The Martian is probably bouncing up and down to get their hands on this brand new sci-fi by the same author. This book sticks to the same formula of being a bit humorous and lighthearted while dealing with a complex world issue. It's following a man who has no memory of who he is and wakes up in a strange place. After pulling some information he naturally knows and using the tools provided to him, there is only one explanation and it's that he is in space. But where? He's very unsure. The story takes the idea of climate disaster and ups the ante a bit, so it's not a surprise this will probably be a big hit. Realm Breaker. The author most known for the Red Queen series is finally back with a new YA fantasy. An entirely new story, almost at 600 pages. This new book includes a mysterious lineage, villain romance, pirate and it's all inspired by medieval times, which is honestly the way to my heart. It's following a young girl living in a small village by the sea who just wants to see the world and go on an adventure, but unfortunately her mother has her tucked away when suddenly an immortal shows up at her door. It sounds like a worthy read from an already critically acclaimed author, and I'm interested. Though I wasn't with Red Queen, I see myself getting into this one easily. The ones we're meant to find. This is coming from the author who wrote the the Descendant of the Crane, which I have to mention also had a beautiful cover, and here we are yet again. This cover is so interesting that I had to include it here on my list. It's a young adult novel being described as We Were Liars meets Black Mirror with a dash of Studio Ghibli? Now that is a wild comparison to be seeing. It's a sci-fi thriller mix standalone set in a dystopian world where siblings C and Casey are separated from each other. I will say I do not get sci-fi dystopian from that cover. It gives me major contemporary vibes, but I'm excited nonetheless. On May 6th, Ariadne releases. This follows the same vein as Circe and the Song of Achilles. As the title kind of gives away, this is the Greek myth retelling of Ariadne. Now, I barely know anything about the myth of Ariadne other than her relation to the Minotaur. If you love complex and interesting female characters and examinations of women's lives and experiences, this will definitely be up your alley. I think it's going to be a powerful read and I'm always super happy to see an underrated mythology getting the spotlight. Moving on to May 11th, there are two very exciting books. One of them, Son of the Storm, will be in stores. I'll also have a video for this one up very soon, so subscribe if you haven't if you want more of my thoughts on if you should give it a try. So I don't want to talk about it too long here, but it's an adult fantasy coming from Orbit Books, set in a world inspired by the pre-colonial empires of West Africa. The 
The main city it's set in has a caste system of the rich and the poor in the middle of a rebellion. One of the most vibrant looking books on this list with I hope an equally vibrant setting. Well, you've already read it, so I already know the answer to that. Blackwater Sister. This is a Malaysian set contemporary fantasy with a dose of paranormal, which has an incredible cover. And honestly, the hook this book has is a stressed lesbian battles gods with her grandmother's ghost. Like, you can't get any cooler than that, honestly. And overall, it has a really cool aesthetic. Even though contemporary can have me running in the opposite direction, I've always been a big fan of the subgenre of paranormal, so seeing all of the Chinese culture combined with it, I'll definitely be giving this one a chance. Also, many of you asked for a Should You Read It episode for this one, so there might be one. Four books releasing on the 18th include Day Zero. This is an apocalyptic adventure story from the author who wrote Sea of Rust. Honestly, one of the biggest hits for me when eyeing this book is the mention of a robotic tiger. Mike Tyson would honestly be excited. It's a story between a robot, who is an AI tiger as I mentioned before, and a boy during a worldwide revolt between robots and humans. I can already tell this is probably absolutely heartbreaking, but early reviews are exceptional so far. There's a lot of interesting stuff here from advanced technology, robot uprisings, loyalty between friends. Honestly, admirers of thoughtful sci-fi are going to go to town with this one for sure. The Broken God. So nothing gets me more in the door than seeing a fantasy finale releasing. That's right, this is the final book to the Black Iron Legacy trilogy, the first book being The Gutter Prayer, which was a huge hit amongst the SFF community. I feel like I was just talking about the release of that book, and here we are carrying the tradition. It's a grim dark fantasy that features three friends who are thieves who get caught up in an ongoing magical battle that consists of a war between gods, essentially. It features so many things that us fantasy nerds love, so if you want to binge read this series, it's officially complete for you with this finale releasing on the 18th. In the Ravenous Dark. This is a dark YA fantasy standalone, and the hook for this one is that it's following a pansexual blood mage who teams up with an undead spirit to start a rebellion among the living and the dead. <laughs> if you're looking for a book that's probably just as gay as Giddy the Ninth, add this one to your TBR immediately. The setting is loosely based on Greek society with all the political scheming included. It does kind of give me um, Wicked Saints vibes a little bit just with the mention of like how dark it is, but yeah hopefully this one goes above and beyond my expectations. Master Artificer. This is the sequel to Master of Sorrows which was a hit debut epic fantasy in 2009. 19, and finally the sequel is releasing. I believe this is like a planned 10 book series, unless that was changed, but yeah, a huge story to dive into. It's following a Nev who has spent his whole life training at the academy to become a master avatar, someone who will dedicate their lives to receiving and storing magical artifacts. However, he learns some secrets that alters his life. This book series has a lot going on for it overall, and the cover to this one matches greatly to its predecessor which is all that matters. And finally on the 25th, the Black Tongue Thief comes out. So on the back of this book, there's a quote from Robin Hobb that says, dazzling. And honestly, I'm sold. <laughs> I'll actually be reading this one in May, and we'll be doing a Should You Read It episode for it, as many of you have asked, so be on the lookout for that closer to its release date. It's following a debt-ridden thief with his blind kitten. I've seen some reviewers compare this to Kings of the Wild, which is one of my all-time favorite books, so I expect a lot of humor, a bit of like lightheartedness mixed with a lot of different creatures, which is going to be a lot of fun because this author's previous works are in the genre of horror, so I'm wondering if the lightheartedness is also mixed with a lot of darkness, so I'm super excited to see that. Up next, Hard Reboot releases on the same day. So are you a Transformers fan? Well, Hard Reboot may be for you. This is a short novella featuring giant mech arena battles, and I hope it's as ridiculous as it sounds. It's following Cass, who's a junior academic on a research mission to Old Earth, when she gets tricked into gambling on a mech battle event. Though it's just under 200 pages, we can hope the author just packs it with as much robot fighting as he can. And finally, The Lights of Prague. This is an interesting one. Apparently for fans of V.E. Schwab and the 
The Witcher, which is a fantastic combination. Yeah, hopefully it lives up to that. It's a fantasy historical fiction that takes place in a gaslight era Prague, so it makes sense that it's following vampire protagonists. So I kind of wish it was coming out maybe closer to October. This would be a great Halloween read, but that's perfectly fine. You don't have to read horror books just in October. Well, I'm not saying this is a horror, but it just has the perfect spooky sound to it, and I'm actually really excited for it. Now, those are just a handful of really cool books coming out in May. Let me know down below in the comments which ones you're the most excited for. Maybe you have some that aren't on my list. Let everyone know down below. Subscribe if you haven't. I upload every week. Follow me on Goodreads, Instagram, and Twitter. Links down below. And until you meet again, happy reading.